Okay? And folks, let's really focus on, that's a little loud, finishing strong. Finishing strong. I know you're going a little loopy, loopy before Christmas. Take your break at Christmas break, but especially catch up on the homework this weekend, please. I'm getting a sense people haven't done much. Probability theory, we said, deals with the mathematics of chance. The experimental probability of an event A, consisting of multiple trials, is determined by, this is review, the number of outcomes divided by the total number of trials. Now that's the experimental probability, then there's the theoretical probability. What's the difference? What's the theoretical probability of rolling a six on this? One, in, one out of six. You know what? If I did the experiment six times and I got five sixes, the experimental probability would say five out of six, because that's what my experiment showed and it contradicts the theoretical probability. However, if I did it 5,000 times, or 500,000 times, or 5 million times, the more I repeated the experiment, the closer the experimental probability would get to the theoretical probability. Nothing prevents me from rolling five sixes in a row. It can happen. Can I roll five million sixes in a row? Yeah. Theoretically, but not likely. It's called, you may have heard it called the law of large numbers. It says in probability, if you want your actual results to match your theoretical results, keep repeating the experiment. And the more you repeat the experiment, the closer your actual results will get to your theoretical results. So the theoretical probability was the number of outcomes favorable to A. Remember, Rachel, in our logic unit, we used a lowercase n to represent how many and the total number of outcomes in the sample space. It's the number of successes divided by the total number of possibilities. Or as I said last class, Hannah, if you can count it, you can calculate the probability. In this lesson, the probabilities you've used, uh, examples in this lesson, the probabilities used could have been obtained by experiment or by theory. So here's an example. Four black counters, four black marbles are put in the bag and five white marbles are put in the bag. Classic probability question will give you black and white marbles, or uh, the one that we just looked at, Julia, and the homework had red and blue. We'll give you colored marbles, because that's easy to visualize, but you can do a lot, much like it was easy to turn stuff into a word, it's fairly easy to turn stuff into marble questions. <coughs> one of the counters is selected at random. What's the probability that this counter is black? Don't overcomplicate it. How many black are there in the bag? Four. Out of? Nine. What's the probability that it's not black or B prime? Did you count or did you do some math in your head? If you counted, that's fine, but it turns out we said this, the statement black and not black are called, what did we call those? We have the letter C, complementary events. Now here, counting and subtracting were about the same speed, but certainly for a deck of cards, if I say, what's the, I picked a queen of clubs, what's the probability of not getting a queen of clubs? 51 out of 52. You could count, but hopefully it's easier to say, well, if it's one out of 52 chance of getting the queen of clubs, there's 51 other cards, the complement. The sum of two probabilities of any two complements has to add to one. You're always, Chelsea, guaranteed that something happens or it doesn't. That's the review. Now let's get to the new stuff, odds. So, the probability that we picked a black marble can be founded by number of blacks divided by the total number of marbles. Let's, that's too much writing. Can I instead, Carm, go uh, N of B over N of S, where S is the sample space? So the chance of selecting a black counter, four out of nine, right? Chance of selecting a non-black counter, a white counter, five out of nine. What's more likely, that you pick a black or a non-black? Okay. We can express this ratio using odds. The odds for selecting a black counter are 
four to five. Can you see where those numbers came from? Okay. The odds against are five to four. It's four to five in favor of getting a black, five to four against getting a black. And this is often what you hear used if you're watching TV and they're talking about sporting events, football gambling, football betting. Odds for is often referred to as odds in favor of. And the odds are normally expressed as a ratio, four colon five. Sometimes you'll see it expressed as a fraction. I'm not a big fan of that because, Jake, I get that mixed up with that because they're both fractions. So my preference is to use colons. But today we're going to talk about then odds, odds in favor, odds against. And we're going to turn the page. We're going to get complicated, but I think it's actually simpler than my definition. We have the following formulas for the event A. The odds in favor are the number of outcomes for A colon the number of outcomes against A. Say what, Mackenzie? That's where the uh, four to five came from. Five favorables, sorry, four favorables, five unfavorables. The odds against are officially defined as the number of outcomes against A. Now, I did a specific example. Let's see if I can use symbology. N of A versus N of A prime. Odds against are N of A prime versus N of A. And the probability is the number of outcomes favorable to A divided by the total number of outcomes. So what that means is odds really is a portion to portion ratio, a part to part ratio, where probability is one part divided by the whole, which is why I'm not a fan of the fraction version of odds tie. It confuses me. So for the example in the review, determine the odds in favor of a white counter being selected. How many white counters are there in the Scrabble bag? <coughs> How many non-white counters are there? The odds in favor of white are 5 to 4. The odds against white are 4 to 5. The probability of white is 5 out of 9. The probability of non-white is 4 out of 9. Even odds when the odds for and the odds against are identical. Technically, it's one to one, but you'll often hear it called 50-50, which reduces in lowest terms to one to one. Most often, for example, for a coin toss, you'll say, hey, what are the odds of getting ahead? And you'll see people say 50-50. What they really mean is one to one. So after suffering a severe heart attack, Dudley's doctor told him that he had even odds of making a full recovery What's the probability that he makes a full recovery? Well, in terms of odds, it's one to one. What is it in terms of a probability? What out of what? One out of two, because there's a total of two outcomes. 1 plus 1, and favorable is one way to get it. Poor Stephanie is in a little better shape. She's also had a heart attack. Not often that females have heart attacks, but it happens. And so she's been told that the probability that she'll make a full recovery is 0.65. What are the odds that she'll make a full recovery? I'll give you a hint. 65, 2, tie, 35. 35. They add to 100, whoever said 100, but it doesn't appear that it's 65 to 35, although it said express it in lowest terms. What goes into both 65 and 35? 
5. So divide by 5, divide by 5, what do we get? 7, 65 divided by 5 is what? 13, I think, or not? Okay, the odds of her making a full recovery in lowest terms, 13 to 7. 13 out of 20, 65%. Horse racing. So when placing bets on horse races, if you watch, say, the Kentucky Derby or some of the big ones that make national television, the chances that each horse will win are often quoted as odds. In a particular five-horse race, the odds against, let's underline that, that's important because that's going to tell us how to interpret this. Each horse winning are quoted as follows. So the odds of free spirit winning are two to one against. The odds of Willow winning are three to one against. Sorry, the odds of Free Spirit losing are two to one. The odds of Willow losing are three to one. The odds of Foxtrot losing are seven to two, eight to one, 11 to one. Which horse is the favorite to win? Sorry, Free Spirit. What's its probability of winning? What out of what? I'll give you a hint. Two out of? Two out of three. What? Two out of three. Probability of it winning, two out of three. What's the probability of Willow winning? Three out of? What's the probability of Foxtrot winning? Sorry, not winning, losing. These are all losing odds, losing odds, losing odds. What's seven out of nine? What's the probability of Gloria losing? Eight out of nine. What's the probability of Lucky Joe losing? 11 out of 12. You can see the probability of losing is getting bigger and bigger. In fact, let's use the complement if Free Spirit has a two and three chance of losing, what's Free Spirit's chance of winning? One and three. One and four. Two and nine. One and nine. One and 12. Okay. What's meant by the phrase odds two to one against? Well, if we repeated this race three times, on average, Free Spirit would lo lose twice and win once. Okay? I'm not a big, f this I can wrap my brain around, probability. Odds, I really gotta think. I really gotta think. We're not gonna fill in B, what we are gonna do is turn the page. So it says, determine the probabilities of the horses winning the race. So you know what? I'm going to make a little chart here. We had uh, Free Spirit. What was the next horse? I've turned the page. Willow. What was the next horse? Foxtrot. Gloria. Gloria. <coughs> Lucky Joe. Poor Lucky Joe. Okay. So... What was the probability of Free Spirit losing? Two out of three. So what's the probability of Free Spirit winning? One out of three. Can you see how I could actually get that from here? Oh, the right-hand side is the winning probability. One out of four. Two out of nine. One out of nine. One out of 12. Is that okay, Chels? One out of four. Foxtrot, two out of nine. Three out of nine. No, no, one out of nine, Mr. Duick, less than that. And what was the last one? One out of 12. If those were all five horse, if those are the only five horses in the race, what should those probabilities add to? 
So part D says, determine the sum of the probabilities. Now, you ready? Get out your fancy schmancy graphing calculators. How do I add fractions? Where's your fraction button on these things? Do you guys know? So all you look up, it's this right here. You're right. So if I want to add 1 third, I go 1 fraction button 3. And it recognizes that as 1 third. Plus, what's the next thing I want to add? 1 fraction button 4. Plus 2 fraction button 9. Plus 1 fraction button 9. Plus 1 fraction button 12. So a fraction button is this thing right here. Oh, sorry, this thing right here, the ABC. Oh, as a symbol, it looks like that little L on its side. When you add these up, what do you get, Pam? Um, I don't know. What? You're right. What'd you get? One. So part D says determine the probabilities. Determine the probabilities. Here we go, Mr. Duick. Draw. There we go. Oh, hang on. I lost my uh, pens. Okay, there they are. It says determine the probabilities of the sum. Probability of. What does that mean? What's 1 as a percentage? Oh, it vanished. OK, I accidentally hit something weird. What did I hit weird? I probably toggled that on or off. Probability, is it going to stay or is it going to vanish? 2, 3, 4. Yeah, OK. Toggle this off, Mr. Duick. Hang on, I hit the wrong button here. Let's see if it vanishes or if it stays. It vanishes. Pause the video for one second. Uh, so it adds to 1. What does that mean? Well, when you have a probability of 1, what you're really saying is you're uh, guaranteed that someone wins. So probability equals 1. Someone has to win. Oh, and also it tells you there's only five horses in this race, because otherwise they wouldn't add to 1. There'd be another possibility out there still. If I got an answer bigger than one, I'd say whoever set these odds up doesn't understand probabilities. Uh, to be honest, if I got an answer bigger than one, that might be one time that I might actually bet on a horse race because something's going wonky. I'd try and sit down and see where they'd screwed up. Maybe I could get better odds. Pardon me? If you add up every possible outcome, it has to add to one. Because if you add up every possible outcome, one of them's got to happen. OK? Um, what are the odds in favor of Foxtrot winning the race? What were the odds against Foxtrot winning the race? Careful, that's the probability. What were the odds against Foxtrot? Can you go look at Foxtrot? Foxtrot. OK, so what's the probability? What are the odds in favor 2 to 7? 7 to 2 against, 2 to 7, 4. Probability of winning, 2 out of 9. See where the 9 comes from? Is that OK? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Short lesson today. I might start the next lesson early <coughs> later on in class. Let me see how big the next lesson looks. Uh, yeah. Homework for now. Homework for now. Number one. Two. Three.
Sure, a little baseball. Four. Five is good. Six is good. Seven. Eight is good. Skip nine. Ten is good, so I've skipped nine so far. Everything else I've assigned. Eleven is good. Ooh, algebraic one. Twelve is good. Thirteen is good. Um, I'm going to go 14, but skip 15. Okay. It's actually not going to take you very long. I suspect about 20 minutes or so to get through the homework. <laughs>